Hello everybody, welcome along to this video. My name is James Woodall and today we're talking about health promotion models and models are really useful in helping us to understand what health promotion is and what it's all about. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so the first model I want to share with you was one devised by Andrew Tannehill. And I think the really important thing to say about Tannehill's model is that this was developed at a time in the mid-1980s where there was a lot of talk about what health promotion was and what it wasn't. And the beauty of Tannehill's model was that it simplified those discussions and those debates. And it said basically that health promotion constituted three overlapping spheres of health education, prevention and health protection. And I think that was the beauty of Tannehill's model was, it, was that it really clarified the debate. I think looking back on it now as a model, I think health promotion is more than just these three spheres of activity. There's not a lot here about well-being, for example. There's not a lot here about salutogenesis. And I think as a model for use now, I think it's fairly limited. I think it did a really good job at the time of kind of debates about language and about practice and I think Tannehill's model really clarified some of those discussions and debates. So that's model one, Andrew Tannehill, 1985. So let's fast forward six years from Tannehill's ideas about health promotion to BT's ideas about health promotion. Now BT's model is still a really well cited tool to think about health promotion and I think that's one of its real strengths that it stood the test of time. So Beatty's model looks very different to Tannehill. Um, Beatty's model is made up of two axes, one horizontal axis that looks at the kind of level of intervention, so whether we're working with individuals or more population or community level uh, approaches. So moving from individuals right the way through to what Beatty calls collective. If we look at the vertical axis, this talks about the kind of the approach. So whether the approach in health promotion is going to be on the one hand authoritative, what we might call top down, or whether the approach is going to be more negotiated with individuals or communities, what we might call more bottom up. So when we put the horizontal and the vertical axis together, it creates four quadrants of activity. And it's these four quadrants that BT argues constitutes health promotion. So you can see there, health promotion, according to BT, is made up of health persuasion, legislative action, personal counselling, community development. So let's do a couple of very quick examples. So let's look at the top right quadrant. Legislative action, which BT argues is an authoritative approach, so a top-down approach, and it's also focused on a collective or a population level. So some examples of that may be the smoking ban, where you know it's a top-down policy, there's no choice in the matter, and it's aimed at a, a population level. Other examples might be things like minimum pricing on alcohol, which again is a potential policy direction that's aimed at populations. So in contrast, let's look at the bottom left quadrant, so the personal counselling box, if you like, or quadrant. Now personal counselling, according to BT, is made up of individual level intervention, so things that are done on a one-to-one -one basis. And it's also a negotiated process, so it's not about top-down uh, directed policy, it's about health promoter and individual working together to negotiate um, how they're going to manage a health need or a health issue. So a good example might be around someone who wants to quit smoking. That might be a process of negotiating whether the best way might be nicotine replacement therapy or it might be about peer support or it might be about going cold turkey. I don't know. So that's an example of how that, that those quadrants work. I think the beauty of BT's model, as I've said, is that it stood the test of time, that it's still very much used today to think about health promotion. And even though it, it, it was derived in, in the 1990s, I still think it has some real uh, application still to the 21st century. So that is BT's model. 
So while technically not a model, I couldn't do this video without mentioning the contribution of Jenny Nadu and Jane Wills, who developed what I would call a typology of health promotion. And they argued that health promotion had five different elements. A medical approach to health promotion, which is about prevention and it's pretty much focused on a, a medical model, which I've talked about in another video. They suggest that health promotion comprises of a kind of educational approach, which is about you know, providing people with the information to make informed choices about their health. There's a behaviour change approach within health promotion, which is about encouraging individuals to change their attitudes so they can adopt healthy behaviours. So that's very much about lifestyle. They argue that there is an empowerment approach in health promotion, which is about giving people more control over the things that influence their health. So giving people skills perhaps to cope with stressful life events or you know sharing um, or empowering people to have that greater sense of control over over what they're doing and then the final element is a social change approach which really can be boiled down to say you know we need to change the kind of physical social and economic um, situation in which you know people live and that in order to do that we need to have some kind of policy um, or redistribution of uh, resources and wealth in order to make a difference to people's health. So that's Nadu and Wills, that's from 2000, that's a really popular model because in, in many ways it kind of discusses the broad range of, of activities that could constitute health promotion. So that's Nadu and Wills. So thank you for listening to this short video which I hope has helped you to understand some of the conceptual models that are out there to describe and explain health promotion. Post comments below in YouTube to continue the discussion or tweet me at Woodall Doctor. I'll be really glad to hear from you. Okay, see you next time.